We will continue with lecture seven, part two, groundwater hydraulics on radial groundwater flow. Some of the coming slides will be discussed rather quickly. Simply hold this recording to take a better look and or study from the book. Pumping wells, other words are withdrawal wells, discharge wells or abstraction wells in Dutch Pomputten are functional for the withdrawal of groundwater from aquifers for use as drinking water or for use in agriculture and industry. Because it takes a long time to replenish groundwater, authorities and drinking water companies should take care not to deplete all water stored underground in an aquifer. To counter depletion, Water can be infiltrated from infiltration canals or recharge wells. Other words are infiltration wells or injection wells in Dutch, infiltratieputte. We will start off with a standalone well, a well within an area with no regional groundwater flow. This picture shows a plan view of steady groundwater flow to a pumping well in the center of a homogeneous isotropic confined aquifer. Groundwater flow is perpendicular to parallel cylinders with a constant depth d, the aquifer thickness. The volume flux or discharge from the well, q0 in cubic meter per day, is constant. Because the groundwater flow is steady, the volume flux perpendicular to the area of the parallel cylinders is constant. As these cylinders, the circles in this plan view, become smaller in the direction of the pumping well, in order for the volume flux to remain constant, the volume flux density must increase towards the pumping well. Thus, the aquifer is homogeneous. Also, the hydraulic gradient increases towards the pumping well. This figure shows radial symmetric steady groundwater flow to a fully penetrating pumping well in a confined aquifer in cross-section view. A fully penetrating well is a well that is incised to the top of a below impermeable layer. Please acknowledge that this section view rotates around the center of the aquifer. Lower case or small r is the radius from the well. The center of the aquifer is thus at small r equals zero. Model-wise, this figure shows radial symmetric flow to a well in the center of a circular island with fixed boundary conditions. H that equals H large r, large r being the radius of the island from the center of the island or well. In reality, H large is the hydraulic head at the location where the pumping well ceases to be of influence, or in other words, the pre-pumping hydraulic head in the aquifer that has no regional groundwater flow. Confined aquifers may contain very large volumes of water as water is stored under pressure in the pore space of the aquifer. The volume flux or discharge Q0 from such a well in a confined aquifer equals small qr times 2 pi r times d. Q0 is the volume flux or discharge at small r equals 0 from the well in cubic meters per day. Small qr is the radial symmetric volume flux density in meter per day. 2 pi r is the circumference of a circle in meter and 2 pi r times d is the cylindrical area perpendicular to the radial symmetric groundwater flow in square meters. In the steady groundwater flow cases m1 to m5, the hydraulic head h decreases with increasing positive x in the direction of flow, linking a positive volume flux with a negative hydraulic gradient and vice versa. Because of this, a minus sign is present in Darcy's law. However, 
In this radial symmetric steady groundwater flow case, the hydraulic head H decreases with decreasing, thus not increasing, but decreasing small r in the direction of flow. As water is pumped up, thus flowing upward in a pumping well, that is in a positive z direction, it is preferred to assign a positive sign to this volume flux or discharge Q0 at the center of the pumping well. Because then both Q0 and the hydraulic gradient are positive in the direction of flow, the minus sign must be dropped in this radial symmetric version of Darcy's law. Also in Darcy's law describing the volume flux density, small qr, the minus sign should then be dropped. Thus Darcy's law then is as stated here to the left. QR is the radial symmetric volume flux density in meter per day. K is the saturated hydraulic conductivity in meter per day. DHDR is the hydraulic gradient in the direction of the pumping well. Combining the equation in the center, the continuity equation for this radial groundwater flow case, with Darcy's law, delivers the following potentiometric drawdown surface as a function of the radial distance from the pumping well, small r. H is the hydraulic head at a distance small r from the well in meter. HR is the pre-pumping hydraulic head in meter. Q0 is the volume flux or discharge from the well at r equals zero in cubic meter per day. KD is the aquifer's transmissivity in square meter per day. Small r is the distance from the well in meter and large r is the radius of influence of the pumped well in meter. Ln is the natural log function, log to the base e. This equation is known as the Dupuis equation. The equation holds from the outside or radius of the pumping well to the radius of influence of the pumped well large r. The volume flux or discharge Q0 from a pumping well is positive, whereas the volume flux or discharge Q0 for a recharge or injection well should be taken as negative. This slide summarizes section M6 at the end of my book. It shows the derivation of the Dupuis equation. I will go over it rather quickly. Here we have the Darcy equation. Here we have the continuity equation. We insert the Darcy equation into the continuity equation. This is what we get. We rewrite it in this shape and then we can integrate it as shown here, which gives this answer. Then we insert the boundary condition. This is new. We insert the boundary condition small r equals big R to find out C. And then this is the equation we get. Using this Dupuis equation, the lowering of the hydraulic head, hr minus h for a pumping well, can be determined for every radial position r between r equals rw, which is the outside of your pumping well, and r equals large r. It is clear that for a pumping well, the drawdown, defined as h minus hr, h being smaller than h large r, has a negative value. This figure again shows radial symmetric steady groundwater flow to a fully penetrating pumping well, but now in an unconfined aquifer. The volume flux Q0 to a fully penetrating well in an unconfined aquifer can be described as shown here. As we have become accustomed to when changing from confined to unconfined, from a confined aquifer to an unconfined aquifer, Note that the hydraulic head 
h which diminishes in the direction of flow towards the pumping well replaces the constant thickness or depth d of the confined aquifer here again combining continuity and darcy's law delivers the following equation for the potentiometric drawdown surface of a well in an unconfined aquifer the equation holds from the outside of the well to the radius of influence of the pumped well large r this slide summarizes the derivation of the equation you can find this uh, at the end of my book section m7 again we have the darcy equation the continuity equation we insert the darcy equation into the continuity equation we rewrite as follows we move all terms with r to the left and all terms with h to the right we integrate and we find this equation and then again we insert the boundary condition small r equals large r to obtain this equation for unconfined conditions where the absolute value of the drawdown h minus hr is much smaller than the hydraulic head h itself we may rewrite this equation as follows. We can use this trick. And then for H plus HR, we can take two times the average saturated thickness or depth of the aquifer. And we can then rewrite the equation in this shape, which we recognize as the Dupuis equation for a confined aquifer. With this, we can complete table 3.3, as shown here. Rw is the radius of the well. If you experience difficulties with the math, if you can't do the math, here are some tips and tricks. You can simply hold this recording to take a better look at it. And likewise, some tips and tricks for steady groundwater flow in an unconfined aquifer between two parallel fully penetrating canals with different water levels, as well as steady groundwater flow in a leaky aquifer. A much encountered problem is salinization, facilitating of freshwater pumping wells, as shown here to the left. We see the uh, build up of the uh, subsurface here where we have fresh water at the top and saline water at the bottom here we have an aquifer here we have an aquifer and here we have the chloride concentrations of the uh, groundwater this can be mitigated vermindered verbatim or even prevented by the use of the fresh keeper concept in dutch we call that het Zoethouder principe, as shown here to the right. Here again, we have the uh, pumping well, pumping for fresh water. Now we don't want brackish water or saline water to enter this pumping well. And what we can do is we can install another pumping well here, which pumps away the brackish water at the same time. So the interface between the fresh water and the brackish water is kept at its place here the brackish groundwater can serve as an additional source for drinking water after desalination with a process called reversed osmosis as shown here at two with if allowed by law the reversed osmosis concentrate a byproduct of the reverse osmosis disposed of by deep well injection at three The Freshkeeper concept has been piloted in the Netherlands since 2009. In April 2018, an earlier abandoned well field has been reopened to produce 1 million cubic meters of drinking water using this Freshkeeper concept.
study well and good luck with the exercises.